Guess what? This is Law & Order SVU Season 3, Episode 3, Stolen. We open up and we're in a grocery store where mom is pushing a little baby around looking for formula. She leaves her car at the end of an aisle for like literally five seconds. And by the time she turns around, her baby Emma is gone. Where's my baby? And then she starts calling, Emma, Emma, your baby is six weeks old. She's not gonna be like, I'm right here. We jump to Benson Stabler at the grocery store. They're getting filled in. The baby's name is Emma Derrick, white undershirt and one piece red jumper. She even had enough brown hair for a little pink bow. Stabler's like, how long did the mother leave her alone? Like literally two seconds. Well, that's all it takes. So the store security says that the protocol is to lock everything down. And that took about three minutes. Now they're interviewing everybody inside. Detectives, we got something in the ladies room. In the trash can, it's baby clothes. What Emma was wearing. They also found a little eyedropper with sedatives. They've got a little baggie holding a sprig of hair with a bow on it. They even gave her a haircut. Shit, so somebody took her, brought her into the bathroom, changed her clothes, cut her hair, gave her some sedatives, and calmly walked out of the store. Oh, now we're talking with mom, and she is in panic mode. Level 10, beating herself up. Her husband shows up, and Stapler pulls him aside. We find out that, uh, Michelle, she's been kind of a mess. One minute she's fine, then the next she's crying and throwing things. Sailor's like, yeah, dude, I know this isn't a big deal yet because it's like the early 2000s, but your wife has postpartum depression. Look it up. So they can't rule out Michelle yet. It did seem pretty pre-planned. <laughs> Cragen says, no, it sounds like somebody who's desperate for a baby and willing to do it the illegal way. I don't know if you remember this, but Stabler is a dad. So he takes his dad act into Michelle. I remember how hard it is, how they just won't stop crying. You know, have you ever wanted to do something bad to them? The music's really swelly, but Michelle's like, no man, I've never regretted a second of it. It's been hard as fuck, but I'm good. Now we've got a whole mobile unit parked outside of the grocery store. Cragen wants Munch to check those videotapes, see if we got anything, and guess what? We did! Okay, there's Michelle, leaves the cart, and a lady walks by, grabs the baby, and keeps going. But damn it, we can't see her face. Hang on a second, let's check the videotapes of them leaving the store. Not her, not her, wait a second. What about that bitch with a suitcase? Finn's like, that baby would be screaming if he was in that suitcase. Not if she was already doped up. Benson gets off the phone and says, hey, that suitcase was purchased in the store a half an hour before the snatch. Charged to a credit card of a Susan Young. We've tracked her workplace to downtown. Let's go talk to her. But guess what? It's not her. No, nope. her purse was stolen this morning from a substance abuse center where she works. Well, we think this lady used your credit card. Does she look familiar? This lady takes one look at this picture. Oh, that's Alicia. Alicia? Yeah, that's one of her clients. She's a crack addict. Man, she was doing so well. She hadn't used since she found out she was pregnant. Pregnant, you say? She had a stillborn last week. So sad which it's very fucking sad. We get the address of Alicia Brown, and while they're searching her apartment, they find drugs and bags of cash. Looks like she's back on the pipe. And just then, Alicia walks into her apartment. Obviously, she turns around and hauls ass out of there. The stapler is hot on her trail. Get off of me, you bitch! Where's the baby? I gave it away! She says she had no choice. She promised her baby, but it died. Who did she promise the baby to? A lawyer. They show up to this address. The woman inside is on the phone. Benson's like, who are you on the phone with? The police. I thought you were burglars. Benson snatches the phone. Hmm, that's funny. It doesn't say 911 here. I take care of the babies. That's all. Babies, you say? Oh, yeah. Open a door and there's like eight cribs in this room. And all these babies are apparently given up for adoption. Stabler's going around and comparing all these babies to a picture of Emma. As if every baby doesn't look exactly the fucking same. But sure enough, he finds her and they put that lady under arrest. Emma's parents come in and reunite with her. Not only that, but the father says to Stabler that Michelle's gonna get some help for her postpartum depression. Screen goes black, Dick Wolf. I'm just kidding. Munch and Finn are in with the lady that was taking care of the babies. She's a certified nurse. She says that Mr. Sanford brings the babies to her and then the adopted parents 
come and take the babies. Mr. Sanford is a wonderful man. Well, tell us where we can find him or you're an accessory. They pick up Mr. Sanford and this dude has an answer for everything. I had no idea the baby was stolen. The cash was reimbursement for costs occurred during pregnancy and birth. Cragen and Cabot are watching from the other side of the glass. It's your call, counselor. Unless we can establish that he knew Alicia was going to steal the baby, we can't charge him for kidnapping. But if we can prove that he sold stolen property, we can get him on grand larceny. Cragen's like, uh, this is a baby, man. Okay, so Munch and Finn are digging through Sanford's old website and files. They're giving Craig in the rundown. Well, we haven't found his adoption papers yet, but he did keep a ledger of all his transactions. This one's from 1989. Baby boy, born July 19th. Baby girls, born April 14th. Baby boy, born June 2nd. Record scratch. Zoom into Craigan's face. What's that date again? June 2nd. 1989. What's that baby's name? Stephen Talmadge. Holy shit. So as it turns out, back in 1989, there was a woman named Jennifer Talmadge who was found strangled in her apartment. Her four-week-old son, Stephen, was missing. And every year on Stephen's birthday, Jennifer's mom and dad, Stephen's grandparents, call Cragen to see if there are any leads. This case has been kicking Cragen in the ass for a dozen years, and now he realizes that Stephen is still alive. So guess what, bitches? Cragen is working this case himself. So after a quick visit to the Telmage's house, where Grandma and Grandpa Telmage show Cragen an entire bedroom full of ungiven gifts, Cragen decides to stomp all over Cabot's time with Sanford. All right. Let's talk about, I'm gonna tie into this murder case, then I'm gonna nail your ass to the wall. You have 10 seconds. Whoa, Cragen. I know you're close to this one, but you gotta chill the fuck out. So back to those babies. Looks like they were all going to be legal adoptions. But hang on, it's a total scam. Motherfucking Sanford is triple dipping. Here's how it works. He promises one baby to three different couples. He gets 30 grand from each of them. And then he tells two of them that the mother backed out. None of these couples call the cops because they're too afraid of getting blackballed by all the adoption agencies. The only lead that we have currently with Jennifer Talmadge is her old college roommate. And she says it was a long ass time ago, but the only boyfriend that she remembers Jennifer having was some dude named Robert Cook. I knew he was trouble the first time I saw him. Then he broke up with her two weeks after they started dating. Jennifer found out she was pregnant and sent him a letter. He never replied. They track Robert Cook down and he's got a couple sons of his own now. He claims he never knew that Jennifer was pregnant, but Cragen thinks it might be a good reason to get rid of her. In fact, why don't we go ahead and take a paternity test on your 12 year old son? Wait, wait, wait. You think that I killed my ex-girlfriend and then somehow adopted my own son? Yeah, dummy, that's what we've been saying. I dumped Jennifer because my girlfriend Linda told me she was pregnant. We got married and that's our son. Yeah, well, we're gonna need DNA from all of you. Linda, the ex-wife, is pissed and blah, 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 DNA comes back. Yep, that kid, Brandon. Biologically, he is Robert and Linda's baby. But guess what? Finn says, Captain, you better take a look at this. Stephen Talmadge's adoption papers. It's got Jennifer Talmadge's signature on it. So she authorized it? The grandparents are like, let me see that. That's not even her fucking signature. They compare her adoption paper signature to her passport signature and they're totally different. Somebody forged her signature. Okay, Sanford, guess what? Not only do you defraud these couples, but this signature isn't even the mother's signature. You're so fucking screwed. Okay, he's ready to make a deal. Cabot says, fine, no jail time, but you have to make restitution to every single couple that you defrauded. And Cragen's like, you give me Stephen Talmadge. Sanford says, fine. A woman came to me with a baby. They find out that a really lovely couple named the Blakes adopted Stephen and they named him Tyler. Steven Tyler. So it's time to make a shitty house call. They break the news to Steven Tyler's mom that her son was the victim of kidnapping. What am I gonna tell my husband and Tyler? This part is sad and emotional, so blah, 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 I'm gonna skip over it. There's a lot of crying and hugging and stuff. They also tell Robert Cook that, hey, remember that biological kid? Yeah, we found him. He's looking through the two-way mirror at him and he says, 
I should be raising him. He's my blood. Hang on just a fucking second, dude. He's a biological father. He never consented to the adoption, so he has the right. Even though Tyler has grown up his entire life with this lovely couple, the Blakes, fuckhead Robert Cook has the right to take him away. Oh, oh, but wait, there's more. Now the grandparents are here and they want Tyler to come and live with them. And this poor kid is stuck in the middle of all of this. Tyler Blake is the victim. Cragen doesn't know what to do about it. Cabot's like, dummy, let me handle it. Cabot's gonna step up to be his attorney and advocate for him to stay with the Blakes. We jump to the family court. Wong is on the stand and testifies that it would be stupid as hell to make Tyler move in with his biological dad. Then mom Blake gets on the stand and says that she's been a good mother. Then Robert Cook has said that he's missed out on all these years because somebody kidnapped his son. Cabot says, it's ripping my guts out. These are all really good people. In the meantime, Benson and Stabler find something out. Robert Cook's ex-wife, Linda, she gave birth to their son, Brandon, about one month before Stephen Talmadge was born. And her hospital mate was a client of Sanford's. She recommended him to Linda. Hmm. So we compared Jennifer's forged signature to Linda Cook's signature. And guess what? Yup, it's a match. Get this bitch in here for some answers. We're divorced, you know. Like, why am I even here? Cragen is in the interrogation room with Linda and the lights are like crazy low and backlit. 12 years ago, Jennifer Talmadge wrote a letter to your husband telling him that she was pregnant. What? Uh. But he never got it because you intercepted it. That's how you found out about Jennifer. Where are you even getting this from? What? You went over to see her. Whatever. And something happened. She died, so you impersonated her and you gave baby Steven to Mr. Sanford. Ah, uh, I want a lawyer. Jump back to family court and the judge is making a ruling on where poor Tyler needs to go. Most children who come through this court don't have one person who wants or cares about them. This is a different situation. All parties involved are acting in the child's best interest. And the judge decides Tyler should be with his biological father. What the fuck? I, I disagree. And in the last scene, the adoptive parents, the Blakes, bio dad Robert Cook, and grandma and grandpa Talmadge are all outside with Tyler talking. It's a good start. But you know what? Fuck everything. Fuck this whole show. Matt. Was Law and Order SVU season three, episode three. Jum jum. <laughs>